But anyway, we're, we're, we're making apple plants. Not apple trees, ladies and gentlemen, but apple plants. And when it's done, we're going to make ourselves an apple fritter in the furnace, and it's going to be absolutely freaking delicious. Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn. I am an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to continue uh, getting our base upgraded and having fun in this awesome game. So I uh, appreciate everybody, by the way, that, who has been watching the, uh, the videos. Um, it's gratifying to see, uh, you know, comments from people saying, you know, you're really helping me learn the game, stuff like that. That's kind of the, you know, partly, I should say, why I'm doing that. I'm also doing this because I enjoy it, too. There's no doubt about that. But uh, we're kind of, you know, trying to kill two stones with one bird here, helping new players learn the game and also just having fun with it. So I uh, really appreciate all the comments and the likes and the subs and everything. Uh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so let's see. What do we got going on today? I've, I've had a few comments from you guys. One of the really, really useful comments, um, and, you know, they're they're all useful. I, I appreciate all of them. I absolutely do. But uh, one of you guys told me the comments that you actually can remove habitats that... Uh, you know, existing habitats, if you want to, to get them out of the way, reposition them, that sort of thing. Um, and it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. It just hadn't occurred to me. Um, can I? I don't think I can shoot him through the tree, can I? Oh, sure enough. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so basically the deal is, guys, is that you, ba you, you need to, if you, let's say, for example, we want to remove this habitat here. Um, so, or I'm sorry, this is a biodome, not a habitat. So what you do... Um, is you start to repair it. And as soon as you repair one part of it, it becomes yours. You own it, right? And then once you own it, then you can actually take it apart. You can dismantle it, the whole thing, with your with your multi-tool. So let's see. Um, I'm trying to think if we want to try that um, somewhere. A, a couple of you guys were also telling me that I can... I could build a new habitat, plop it right down in here, and it'll it'll connect to everything else that's here. Which, you know, we might actually do that at some point. So, honestly, I don't think I want to remove anything from here. <laughs> I think I want to keep it all the way that it is currently. But here, here again, the idea is, well, you know what, actually, let's go look at this. Let's go look at this habitat. See, one of the nice things about this one here, I'm not planning on necessarily doing anything with it. But it gives me a daily supply of loot because all of this stuff respawns, right? Um, so I kind of don't want to really get rid of anything here. But the idea is that, you know, if I got out my my tool and I and I hit F to begin repairs, and then I actually repair um, from what I I was being told, if I if I just repair one part of it, then it all all of a sudden becomes mine because right now it says unowned, right? And then when it's mine. You know, then you can come up to it, and you can um, d dis. Whoops! Almost landed on the cactoid there. Then you can dismantle it. So I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah. So do you see where it says dismantle habitat? I could completely destroy this whole entire thing now because I own it. So that's how you get rid of it, which is a really useful tip. Super appreciate um, the individual that told me that. And uh, I don't know who it is off the top of my head. I'll, t I'll take a look um, in editing and, and give you credit uh, on the screen. So thank you very much. And thanks, thank you, everybody, for all your tips. It's really awesome. Okay, so I told you guys I was going to do some stuff off camera, and I never actually got around to doing anything off camera. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of wing it here today on uh, what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and go into settings and get rid of our bloom. Thank you very much. And, um, <clears throat> unless I don't think I did stuff off camera, did I? I can't remember. Anyway, we're going to set up our barracks today, which is what this coupler is for. And then we're going to look at maybe possibly uh, setting up our, a biodome too, depending upon how our time goes and our resources and that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and loot. Whoops. Uh, loot these crates right now and get the stuff out of them because um, these crates are going to have to go. Because this is where we're going to set up our biodome. But I'm going to leave them in place 
until and unless we actually get that far in this episode. And then uh, what I would like to do as soon as possible, probably won't happen in this episode, but as soon as possible, is I'd like to go have an actual uh, discovery episode where we're going to make the different tools that we can use and we're going to go out and start discovering uh, plants and, and, and animals and getting the different ingredients that we can get from them and just kind of check that part of the game out because that's all new, you know, to this the discovery update. Um, and then those materials that we get, we can, um, you know, we can we can use them for crafting uh, because we have all of the crafting stations now that we need except for the upgraded version of the fabricator, um, which we're not going to be able to do until we get to... Oh, we can do the suit augmentation upgrade. Yeah, we should do that. Uh, but the high-tech upgrade we can't do until we get up to the moon so we can get zirconium to make all that zirconia zirconium uh, product right there. Okay, so I think I did organize my stuff off camera. So this is like my, my previous tools and extra weapons, that sort of thing. Uh, this is food, which, by the way, uh, let's go ahead and move some food in into there. One of you guys also pointed out to me in the comments a, a dupe a bug. And I don't know that yeah, it's probably it probably hasn't actually been fixed yet. But basically if you if you want to know how it works, it seemed to me like if I took these things here, um, let's see if we can recreate it just just to demonstrate it. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that anybody cheats. I'm pointing it out so that it hopefully will get fixed, but uh, so see right now we have um, we have four power cells right here, okay? So what I was demonstrating to you guys the other day is if you take it and you left click and you hold the mouse button down and then you right click it like so and then um, oh I think they must have fixed it because what I did is then I put it back in and it changed this here what if we have a single? And we do this. Yeah, see, it was it was changing this back to a full stack. So they must have fixed that, which is good. I'm glad that they fixed it. I don't like, you know, I don't like it when stuff like that happens because, you know, it's not supposed to happen. Um, so, yeah, that looks like that's been fixed. Okay, cool. But anyway, yeah, it, it was, uh, I don't know if it was the last episode or the episode before that that I put out where I was showing you how to separate stacks. And then when I put them back in, it was it it's changed it automatically to a full stack when there wasn't actually a full stack there. It was really weird. Um, so somebody pointed that out to me. So thank you for pointing that out as well. But it looks like it's fixed, which is what we want. We want the game working the way that it's supposed to. There's no cheating allowed. Cheaters never prosper. Remember that, boys and girls. Okay, so let's default sort that. Um, we got some extra cloth there. I've got so much cloth, and I'll probably never actually use it. So I'm not even, I'm not even um, doing anything with the, the scrap cloth anymore. It's just, just not worth it. And okay, so we have. I'm putting like you know extra tape and bandages and stuff like that in here uh, that we have when we come across it. In fact, let's split this stack here. Wrong button. Pick it up. Um, yeah, let's split this stack here. Um, I want to. I don't want to keep a full stack because then when I loot more, then it's going to just take up another slot. And this stuff, I think we need to, we want to take outside. Yeah, I think I'm keeping all the barrel stuff outside and the soil and that sort of thing too. Okay, so let's see, Let, let's first work on getting our, our suit upgrade done. So we need a dime alloy, circuit board, uh, 6AL, 4V, and a wire. So we've got the circuit boards and the wires in here. And we'll go out here to make the time alloy and the other thing we doodle. Okay, so we need silver and copper for that. Let's go over here to our our chess. That's aluminum. Oh, actually, you know what? We're since we're gonna be doing more constructing, I'm I'm just gonna grab everything. Uh, well, you know, one of everything like we've been doing. So let's put this in here. The sand we can turn into glass, and this is still apparently useless, so I'm going to throw it out. 
Scrap metal. Where am I keeping that? I can't remember. We're, this is where I'm keeping barrels and other extra stuff, I guess. It's somewhat organized. There's no room to put more barrels in there anyway. One of these has some scrap metal in it. I just don't remember which one. Is it this one? There we go. That one. Okay. Place for everything, everything in its place. Now, let's go into here and turn all of this sand into glass. And it looks... Oh, yeah, okay. And let's turn... No, we've already turned this meat into grilled meat, so let's make some more stews with that. I'm going to just drop this extra piece of sand. So, we want to take all of this, but we don't want duplicates, so we, we can save space. So we'll just want one stack... Uh, or one slot's worth of everything. We'll take the lithium. What's this? Aluminum. Oh, I'm actually kind of low on aluminum, I think. So that's something I'm going to have to go out and get. We got mag. We got iron. We got mercury. Uh, lead. Molybdenum. We already have We already have that. So a nickel. We already have that. Silver. Don't think we have any silver. Sulfur. We already grabbed some molly. Let's have a full stack in... This is tin. Titanium. We already have silver. I don't think we have a full stack of it, though. Uh, tungsten, zinc, and... We already have titanium. Okay, so that gives us all the ores um, in our inventory. And we needed to make a... Uh, one of these. Okay. And we made the... Uh, the do I already make the dime alloy? Oh, no, because I needed to get the ore right. Okay, so let's make the dime alloy. And then I think everything else it needed was just tech stuff, so we needed wire and circuit board, which... Did I already grab that? I don't remember. Let's take a look. So what happens when you get old, man. Don't remember what you just damn well did. Okay, so let's sort this by default. Yeah, we got circuit boards, we got wires. Let's put some power cells in here. Um, a full stack of glass, or at least more than that. And we want... Is this rubber? Yeah, we want rubber, and we want... This we should... Scrap rubber we should turn into real rubber, so we'll take that back outside. We want a little steel, too. And uh, plastic. So we're really low on plastic. We're going to have to make some more of that. We might have to go out and get ourselves some some methane we'll see how that goes all right open the fabricator upgrade and we're going to do the suit augmentation upgrade oh, oh wow look at that that's new oh, oh check it out you guys um there's actually a, a dude here now oh wow that is really cool <laughs> check it out i didn't even know that they had made that change to the suit upgrade right on that is awesome okay so now if we go into here we can make uh, different types of upgrades for the suit. Let's take a quick look at those. Um, so here we have um, a hover booster. And what this does is... Um, I guess it doesn't... It just tells us up above. I mean, it, I was looking for a detailed description, but of course it's going to boost our hover, right? So there you go. Cooling unit. This will keep us cool when we're in a hot place. Now, Osiris has a another planet... I think it's called Zur or Wur or something like that, and it's a lava planet, and it's very hot there. However, um, that planet has been disabled, and I don't know if it's been re-enabled in this update. We won't be able to tell that until we go up into space. But anyways, that's when you would want to use something like this. A uh, fuel compressor. This... Um. Oh, I just made it. Oh, no, I don't want to make it yet. Fuel compressor. These are for your boots. I think this makes your 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 booster um, your hover booster more efficient. I think I can't remember for sure, but I think that's what it does. Oh yeah, yeah, it says that right there. It says hover duration. Uh, basically, you get twenty five percent more hover duration and less fuel usage, which means, of course, it's not going to run out as fast and it's going to re uh, recharge more quickly. That's actually a really good one. So 
the hover booster just basically increases the duration and the height uh, by by twice as much and half the fuel usage. So really, this is I, I I was comparing these before too. I think this is actually the better deal here because it kind of does the same thing as this one. The only thing this one does really better is it recharges more quickly, but this gives you twice the height and twice the duration and half the fuel usage. So I think this one is actually the better deal. And in fact, we're going to make that. So to make that, we're going to need a battery. But let's look at the rest of them first. A glide unit. This prevents fall damage and uh, gives you uh, more hover duration. Um, but it used to also say that you couldn't go as high with this. So this is really good for scooching across relatively flat uh, places. Um, and I never actually have used that either. I still really like the hover booster. Uh, the heat sink. This is going to be important when we go to... Oh, this is heat and cold. Okay, so this, this actually gives us protection from both heat and cold. We're going to need this when we go to the moons because they're really cold up in space. And this is also going to be handy down, you know, deep in the caves too. Okay, flashlight power usage and range. Okay, that's fairly useful. Recovery unit. This is, is uh, less damage taken, hover fuel recharge, and oxygen recharge. So this makes you tougher, but it takes longer for your fuel and O2 to recharge. Okay, um, this basically gives, oh wow, this gives even more heat and cold resistance than the heat sink. Interesting. And it makes your, your flashlight last longer. So I would say the solar unit is actually better than the heat sink unit of our fuel recharge. Yeah, much better, actually. Huh, okay. Uh, we might have to look into that one instead. The stim unit, um, less damage, less oxygen consumption, but longer recharge. And then the storage unit, basically, it says it greatly, oh, it does greatly expand. It adds 24 slots, whereas the old, the old version of this only added like four i mean it was or well it was, maybe it was like eight wow that's greatly improved too okay so this is some good stuff you guys this is some good stuff so i think for here and now i'd be down for the storage unit uh and that's only a cloth bundle so we've got all kinds of cloth where do i where did i put that let's grab some cloth here and we're going to do the storage unit and this is a backpack. So so here's the thing. You can only put one. You have three slots. You have the backpack, you have the boots, and then you have the suit. Um, so now if we go into our inventory, see we have a helmet slot, a suit slot, and basically these are your boot slots. So this has to go into the suit slot. And that just added all these extra slots. And you can tell which ones are extra because they're highlighted in green. That's a lot of extra space. That's way more than we used to get. So yeah, very nice improvement there. Okay, so for our boot upgrade, I'm kind of, again, I'm kind of favoring the fuel compressor um, over the hover booster. Let's look at these one more, uh, or no, sorry, the other way around, the hover booster, because this gives us twice the duration, twice the height, and half the fuel usage. This one gives us only 25% more duration, only 80%. Uh, or, or only 20% less fuel usage, and it takes longer to recharge. So, yeah, this I don't even know why this is here. What what would possibly make this better than this? I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe it just needs to be rebalanced. So I think we want the hover booster for our boots. Um, the other thing, what was the other boot? Oh, or the glide unit. I mean, I don't know. I, I should probably try this. Prevents fall damage. I mean, that in and of itself is actually pretty useful. Um, and hover duration times 30. So this is three times the hover duration. The thing is, though, is does this... Uh, can we not go as high with this? Because I, th I thought I, it used to tell us that you that it, it trades, you know, height for, for gliding. The only way to know for sure is to try it. So let's make both of these and we're going to test them both out. Okay, so I want to make the hover booster, and to do that, we're going to need a battery, and the glide unit is going to also need a battery and some more 6AL4V. So we need to make two batteries, so let's do it. To make a battery, we need 
two power cells and a, and a oh we're gonna run out of plastic you guys gosh dang it okay well here let's do let's make the first one now because we have we do have one thing of plastic we're gonna have to make some more plastic do I have any methane in here I do have a little bit of methane in here um let's see how much we can make We need to make more furnaces just so we have more methane on hand. Okay, so what else do we need for plastic? Sulfur and lead, which we have in our inventory. So, uh, two, <laughs> two pieces. Yeah, okay. We definitely need, need more methane, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe we'll load... Yeah, you know what? Let's load up the rover with a bunch of empty jars and we'll go find a methane pool and just load up on the stuff. Uh, we'll try and get that done in this episode if we can. Let's put this methane back in wherever we grabbed it. I'm just going to put it in there for now. A little bit disorganized out here, but not terribly disorganized. Just a little bit. All right. This is an... I don't know if, if I've shown this this shorter creature to you guys. This is an arachnoid. He usually only comes out at nighttime. Um, and the, the gnat usually only comes out at nighttime, too. And, well, shit. And he's a scary mofo. And he's actually relatively... Oh, shit. Relatively dangerous. Get out of here. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen this guy, yeah, this is an arachnoid. He's pretty scary looking, man. Look at that dude. Oh, you got a friend. You dead. Okay, have we discovered uh, these guys? No, we haven't. Okay, let's inspect. There you go, an arachnoid. Nasty, nasty critter. They just, you know, they they move around a lot and they charge in and then back up and they're very, uh, you know, they they juke a lot and they're just kind of a pain in the butt. But it's it's a, you don't usually see them out in the daytime. I wonder if we just had like a little, you know, horde come in. That's probably what happened there. But food supply soon. yeah, okay, he's got a lot of stuff to harvest, but let's not mess with that now. We need to continue doing our upgrades because that's what we're that's what we're about today, man. These suit upgrades are actually much improved. I'm very impressed with what they've done with these. Okay, so let's see. We need to make uh, batteries, right? That's what we're doing. So we got some plastic. Uh, oh, power cells and electrum. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Okay. Okay, we made a little more rubber and got, grabbed a couple more pieces of meat that will turn into the meat stew back uh, inside the habitat there. So we can queue up 20 more of those. And we already have 29, so we're doing really good on food right now. Get that topped off, too. Let's put the meat, the extra grilled meat in here for now. I don't want to eat this straight up anymore because I'd rather uh, turn it into the stew. Okay, so uh, let's make two batteries here, and then we should be able to make... Those, um, oh, doggone it, I needed four power cells. Okay, well, here, let's make this one first. Uh, so we want to make the, the hover booster. Yeah, let's make the hover booster. We're going to test out the glide unit, though, too. I just want to compare the two to see, you know, what the differences are. Let's put this in our mobility slot. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. And then what do we want to do for our, our helmet upgrade? Let's take a look and see what the options are once again for that. So this is a helmet upgrade. This reduces um, oxygen. It says oxygen consumption 1.25. That seems like it's increasing oxygen consumption. But, at the, but with the trade-off of recharging twice as fast, I guess. A little less stamina usage, which is nice. Okay, so that's that could be useful more in space. That's a backpack. Fuel compressor is boots. Heat sink is backpack. Light unit is helmet. So this gives us more flashlight power and usage. Uh, that's boots. That's backpack. Stim unit is helmet. Less damage. Less oxygen consumption, but more oxygen recharge. 
I think this is probably our best bet, except for we, oh shoot, it needs cubic zirconia, which we can't do quite yet. Okay, so that one's out, out for now. But this is probably the best one to take ultimately. So I think, um, see, yeah, this is going to make us go through oxygen faster, which is going to affect our stam. Well, it's no, it says stamina usage is less. So that means we could run a little bit longer. Uh, or the light unit. I mean, I don't know. This one's cheaper to make and we can make it right now. Whereas this one was going to require another battery. And I'd kind of like to save the other battery for this until we can get some more uh, methane. So yeah, let, let's let's go with um, let's just go with the O. No, not the O2 pump, the light unit, since we can just make it straight up. And we can always change these out later too. You know, you're not you're not stuck with uh, any one thing. You know, once you put it in, they can be uh, traded out. Okay, let's go into here, hit F1, and add this. And so now we have a better light range and uh, more more longevity for the light before it runs out okay cool so we are set with some suit upgrades very very good now um the next thing i want to do is well we can we can actually still make the glide unit too i just needed to go make two more cells and we're going to test both of those out because i'm really curious to see you know what the difference is ultimately going to be between them so let's make two more power cells uh, do we need to make another electrum no, we have an extra Electrum there, so. All right, we got a stupid dust storm. I was talking with uh, a couple of you guys on comments, too, about doing a, a hardcore series, and I've mentioned that a couple times now. Um, so when we're, you know, either finished with this kind of tutorial series or at least when we're, you know, getting close to being finished, I'm going to do a normal Let's Play with the, the difficulty settings turned up. I'm going to I'm going to try and do it in a realistic way though. So for example, I would rather um I would rather enemies be more deadly offensively, but I also want to be more deadly offensively. In other words, I don't want to make bullet sponges. I want an enemy to put, potentially, you know, kill me very fast, but I want to also be able to kill them very fast because I think that's going to be more realistic. Um, I want the storms to be dangerous. I want them to actually be able to kill me if I don't do something to get out of them. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so, so I'm just going to tweak the settings and make it more challenging in what I feel is a real realistic way. And then we'll do a, a playthrough, you know, uh, based upon that should be fun. Okay. Anyways, let's open the fabricator. Let's make another battery here. Okay, and then um, we wanted to try the glide unit. So we need a wire and another 6AL4V. Okay, so are we, at, we're actually out of wire, huh? Yeah, we are. Okay, so to make a wire, let's just, let's actually queue up like five of these just because we need them all the time. You always need wire for stuff. Okay, why is it not letting me make it? Hold on. What? I've got all the stuff. Uh, what am I missing? We've got a battery, we got Duralumin, we got 6L4V whatever, we got wire. Is this broken? It's doing like a little blippity do thing, but it. What? What am I missing? I don't get it. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Look in the on the left hand side when when you when you you know uh, pin it. This says I need a diamond, but it doesn't. It doesn't show that here. Okay, I think we have another issue. <laughs> another bug. It doesn't show that you need a diamond here. Up up here in this menu. But if you look on the left-hand side of my screen where it says glide unit, it shows that we need a diamond. Son of a... Okay. Well, you know, I mean, we can get diamond. I know where it is. I'll show you guys where it is. I mean, we can get a bunch of diamond, like probably two and a half stacks worth of diamond. 
Um, uh, or even more than that, if we decide to do, get both, go to both caverns. But they're kind of a pain in the butt to get to. Uh, all right. Well, I guess that means we're gonna have to hold off on that, guys, because I want to get, I want to get going on the, the barracks today. So yeah, we'll have to hold off on that. But we will do it. We will do it. We got to go get diamonds for other reasons, anyway. So once we do, you know, then we can test the the glide unit at that point. All right. Let's kill this little turkey here. Come here, you bastard. You dead. And we got uh, big boy here too. One of you guys were telling me in the comments that the armor on these things is actually functional uh, because in a one of the experimental episodes I was hitting them in the head and it wasn't doing much much down hitting them ahead with, with with a gun I should say and it wasn't doing much damage to him um and I think that's correct because I did actually test that off camera and I shot him in the belly and what it, it did more damage so I think I'm pretty sure that that's correct the thing that makes it not a hundred percent for sure is be because of the crit factor um so anyway I'm gonna harvest this guy because I can't pass up all the meat he's gonna give us he's gonna <clears throat> give us a bunch of meat so let's just get that really quick there he goes Okay, so we harvested him, plus we hit a couple of parasites, and we got 27 meat out of that, all, all, out of all that. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, guys, it is time for the barracks. It is time for us to build the barracks. So the plan is to put the barracks right there where the coupler is, and we're going <clears> to <throat> go over here, kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, stand off to the side, hit the F2 button, go to structures, select the barracks, and we need steel, more plastic, Cobalt, talonite, gunmetal, wire, rubber. Doggone it. All right, you guys. We're going to have to go get some more. We're going to go get some methane. Let's just do it. Let's just do it and get it done. You know, the other way we're going to get more methane, too, is I'm going to actually build some more furnaces. So let's do both of those things. Let's do both of those things. So let's do some furnaces first while I'm still loaded up with all my, my loot skis. Ooh, look at you moving fast. Okay. Not faster than my bolt rifle, though. Okay, so first thing is let's do a couple more furnaces. So we're going to go into F2. We're going to go to utilities. Um, and so we need scrap metal, makeshift patch tape, barrel, and crude pipe. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to do this off camera because then I have to go do all the upgrades, too. So I'm just going to build three, you know, three a total of three, maybe even four furnaces just so we can get some methane production going. That's just going to take longer than I want to do uh, on camera right now. So, okay, that being the case, we are going to go get ourselves some methane. So let's go ahead and offload our stuff. We're going to load a bunch of jars into the rover and then go load up on a bunch of methane. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm loaded up on jars. We're going to stop and grab some more um, hydrogen while we're out and about, too, and probably some more nitrogen, too. Oh, we don't have anything in the tank right there yet, so... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and hop in the rover here. Now, as far as the methane pools goes, there are, um, there's several methane pools around the map. I know one of them is going to be to the west of us. Let's get up over the hill here. So I have to think about where those are going to be. Let's go this way. Whoa. I'm sure there is a methane pool here in the east, but I can't remember off the top of my head where it would be. So, yeah, we're just going to go to the west. But it's really nice to have the vehicle now because, you know, we can get around faster. We can haul stuff, a more, lot more stuff. We're not expending stamina and and. Uh, by virtue of doing that, running out of food and hydration more quickly. So it's just a much, much better situation. And, you know, once we get the spaceship, the spaceship is arguably even a better hauler because it's got even more space and you can fly all over the place. The only downside to the spaceship, unless they've improved this, which we won't know until we make it, unless you guys know in the comments, is it takes a really long time to land in it. 
It's just, you know, the hover animations that they have for it are just kind of a... It just takes a long time, so it's a bit of a pain in the butt from that standpoint, but otherwise, uh, the spaceship's actually a really good option for, for hauling stuff around. There's some hydrogen. Let's go ahead and stop and grab this while we're here. I'm just going to fill everything with hydrogen, take it back to our base, and put it all in the big tank. And then I'm going to have to go out and get a load of nitrogen so we can make more hydrazine for our vehicle. Oh, we're out of gas. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and wait for it to recharge because it'll take a little while. So we'll hit it on the way back or maybe we'll hit a different vent or uh, just, you know, do whatever. Now, um, we're going to move into this forest up to the north here. Uh, one of the two forests that we have, well, we have three forests. We have the Bloodleaf, uh, and then the other two, their name escapes me at the moment. Those are Chlorine Gasp. I don't think we, I don't think we need to do that yet. Um, we could, let's go ahead and salvage the, the satellite dish since it's right here. I wish they'd f fix this so you could just harvest it, you know, from anywhere instead of having to be on a specific spot. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck. Maybe they will. One thing about the devs, man, they are good at fixing stuff and adding improvements. They are really dedicated to making this game successful. Now, uh, there's some O2. I can't think off the top of my head what we need O2 for for right now, so let's just leave it. But uh, in one of these forests i don't i can't remember i think it's this one yeah i think it's this forest we should find a methane pool i do have it i believe i have it listed on my spreadsheet which i could pull up if we need to but somewhere i'm pretty sure somewhere in this forest there's a methane pool yeah here it is okay cool All right, so uh, let's turn our, our light off for now. Okay, do we have monsters coming after us or are we good? Okay, I think we're okay for the moment. Now, here's how the methane pools work if you haven't seen them. Uh, we need to get the water jars on our toolbar or the liquid jars, jar jars, glass jars. Now, each time you extract some methane, the pool gets smaller, which is really kind of cool. So watch this. See how the pool gets smaller? And you'll, you'll eventually exhaust it, but then the next time it rains, it'll just fill back up again. Because remember, the, the rain on this moon is methane. It's not H2O. So it's kind of neat. So lots of, lots of fuel there. And, 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 you know, I mean, with the rover and we have so many glass jars, it, it's pro it's... We can get a lot more methane doing this than waiting for the distilleries. But the nice thing about the distilleries is they're just right there and it's free. And if you just need a little bit, you know, it, it's just right there. So that's the good thing about it. So we're going to do both ways. If we need a big old batch of methane like we do now, we'll come and get it. But we're also going to um, uh, make it ourselves, right? So that way it's it's handy if we need it just really quickly. Okay, let's see if we can get the rest of these filled up if, without exhaust. This is a pretty good sized pool though, so. Okay, yeah, we we have one jar left. <laughs> one jar left. All right. Not bad though, actually. Not bad. You know what? On second thought, I'm going to grab one, one can of O2. I don't know what I need it for at the moment, but we might end up needing it. And eventually, what I like to do in this game is get, you know, the big fuel tanks, or gas tanks, I should say, set up, and then fill all of them with all of the gases. 
Um, but for now, let's, since we're here, we might as well grab at least one thing of O2. Uh, there's a couple of different things that you use O2 for. One of them, of course, is making actual water, but we don't need to do that because we have the water um, a reclaimer in the, in the base, so it's just not necessary uh, to do it, use it for water, but there's at least one other recipe that I can think of that needs it too, and uh, we might we might want it, so let's just grab it while we're here. We could grab a thing of chlorine too. Eh, what the hell? Let's grab a thing of chlorine. Why not? There's another Skellia pot around here somewhere. Ooh, wow, look at our hover height now, you guys. Man, freaking tastic. Alright, let's put a, a thing down here. There he is. He's kind of not bothering us at the moment, though. We'll get some chlorine again, just in case we need it for something. Uh, you used to need chlorine to make either, uh, it was either plastic or rubber, I can't remember, in the earlier stable release. Okay, this gas here is fluorine. And just like we've been doing with the other ones, we're going to grab one thing of it. That way we have it if we need it. Um, so yeah, let's get another bucket here or, or barrel. All right, so we have some chlorine. We have some fluorine. We got a bunch of hydrogen. And we've got one barrel left. Oh, and we have some, we have one barrel of O2. We have one barrel left that we, that we could fill with um, some more nitrogen, which is going to be back in the bloodleaf forest. There's also O2 in the, in the fungal thicket too. Oh, you know what else we should do while we're out and about? We should go get... We should go get some diamonds. Um, so the diamonds in mine one, which is right here, are a little harder to find. When I say the diamonds, I mean like the big diamond room. Uh, then they are in mine two, because I kind of know mostly how to get to them in mine two. Um, here, let's grab this. But I have gotten to them here in mine one as well. I just, I, I couldn't say, go this way, go this way, go that way, go that way, and then you're there kind of thing. I still have to kind of find, figure it out a little bit. Um. All right, so let's open the inventory here, and we're going to put all of these full cans of gas and liquid inside. Oh, we're out of space. Okay, that's fine. We still have lots of room in our own inventory. I wished I would have uh, repaired my stuff before we were going in here, but I didn't, so it's all right. We'll be fine. Let's go uh, top off our food, and um, I want to I want to check out the the hover booster for a minute. Oh yeah, that is way better, you guys. Wait for it to recharge. Yeah, as long as you don't let it completely run out, you can go a lot further. And the height on it is is much better, too. So let's see how high we can go. Oh, interesting. It looks like there's... Was I running into the tree? Because it looked like it. there was almost like a ceiling to it. Let's try it again. Yeah, it stops me right there, no matter what. Interesting. Okay. I like it. 
All right, let's go in here and see if we can find some diamonds. We're going to avoid the skeletopods, as he says, as he runs into one. So for this mine, um, the first thing you want to do, of course, is get past all of the what we'll call man-made structures. So you got to go through those two hallways. You got to go, you got you skip that because that's a dead end. You, you turn right and you have one more hallway here that kind of curves around. Okay. And then that's it. We're not going to see any more, you know, like constructed stuff. So from here now we can go, uh, I think we have to go left f first. Yeah. Cause we can't go anywhere. So we go left through here. And then when we come to this room, that's a, we can go through there or we can go right. And that now I'm not, I don't remember exactly which way to go. So we're just going to, oh, you know what? I guess there is more of these, these little man-made structure things here. Um, but you don't find any more like hallways, like whole hallways. So if we go right, that brings us out into a cavern room here and Oh, I guess this, I guess this dead ends. Okay. Well, that, that's, uh, that's good to know. That means this is the only way we can go. So you want to go through this kind of like broken uh, hallway here until it says red sea's edge. Okay. I remember that. And then, um, at some point I should probably come in here and actually map this out. But right now I just kind of run around until I eventually find what I'm looking for. <laughs> So now we can either go left again or we can go right. Let's go right. Okay, so we came through. I think we came through there. So this goes left. Let's go this direction. We're coming through here. Yeah, I find mine one a little more confusing than mine two. Okay, so we come out into this big cavern here, but we can't, again, it's a dead end. There's no oh, more, dropping. no way to go. Okay, so let's go back out this way. We should probably do something about our vitals dropping, huh? Oh. Okay. Let's go left this time instead of right. Uh, okay, so that leads to a dead end as well. But I think we can go through here. Yeah, I'm like I'm I'm already completely lost here. So this seems like the way we came before. Oh no, we got it. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. See, like I said, I I don't know exactly how to get here. I just kind of wander around until I eventually find it. But this is the diamond cavern for those of you who have not seen it. And as you can see, there are a mess of diamonds in here. We're going to harvest all of those. Let's deal with the enemies first, because otherwise they're going to come and bite us in the nuts when we're trying to mine our, our diamond here. Now, uh, this room also, in addition to all these diamonds that we have, if you go over here... There's another one of these rooms with a crate, and this crate should also have at least one diamond in it, which it does, uh, and a couple of other minerals as well. But you can't go through this door here. Um, I'm sure that's coming up in, in a future episode. Okay, so we've got a whole mess of diamonds in here. I'm going to mine these up, and then when I'm finished, um, we'll take a look and see what the, the end result is. I'm expecting to get about two and a half-ish or so stacks out of all of these. So we have the one here that we looted, and I'll show you... Um, the count of the, the diamonds when we are finished. All right, guys, I got all the diamonds. One thing I want to point out to you, this is really important, is be really careful when you're harvesting these diamonds because sometimes there will be one little tiny shard left and it's, it can be very difficult to see. And if you miss it, then, you know, you miss out on, a, on an extra diamond. So just watch that. Watch those when you're mining these nodes. Let's take a look and see what the final count is. We got, yeah, we got about two, um, a little less than two and a half stacks. So that's a pretty good haul. Those diamonds will last us for, for a little while. 
And again, there's another cavern in mine too that's exactly uh, like this one that we can go to at some point if we need to to get more diamonds. I'm not sure if the diamonds respawn or not. I don't think they do because I don't think any of the mineral ores uh, nodes respawn on the normal setting. So I'm pretty sure that's all we're going to get from in here. But again, there's a whole other room exactly like this one in mine too that we can go to as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to try and figure out how to get the hell back out of this place again. And then I'm going to go to uh, back back to the base, get a couple things situated, then I'll bring you guys back at that point. And we will, um, I, I want to make the, the gliders, and I just want to compare those to the other hover boosters uh, before we wrap things up. Oh, and we'll, we'll also at least get the habitat started too before I let you go. Okay, so I'll meet you guys back at the base. All right, guys, uh, I am back. And I have a confession to make, and that is that I did my my old guy moment situation where I thought I was recording and then realized after probably 30 minutes of recording that I wasn't actually recording. <laughs> so sometimes that happens. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and retrace uh, my steps, you know, just call, go over everything we did because this is also a tutorial series. And so I want to make sure everybody uh, sees how things work. Um, so, okay, what did we do? <laughs> we did so much stuff. Good lord. Okay. Um, I made four furnaces, okay? And I put the, uh, the distillery upgrade for methane and the power cell upgrade on all four of them. This one I also added the cooking upgrade to because, you know, meat cooks so quickly. We don't really need them on all of them. Not, not that it's a big deal to put them all on. I might do that later. Okay, so we got that done. I made... Um, about, I made a stack of plastic in here. So, you know, with sulfur lead and the methane that we brought back and we still have more methane left over uh, quite a bit. I didn't you turn all of this into plastic because it was going to use up all of my sulfur and I didn't want that to happen. I put all of the uh, extra gases that we got except for hydrogen in this place uh, or in this uh, crate. So you can see that we have a chlorine, a fluorine, some nitrogens and an O2 in there. I have took the, all the hydrogen that I brought back and loaded it up here in the gas tank. So we have 53% full there. Uh, we we took the, or we refueled the rover, um, but it's only about 60% full here. So I need to go out and get some more, uh, gather some more resources, hydrogen, nitrogen in particular, to make a new batch of hydrogen for the rover. But it's about uh, two thirds full at the moment. So it's not in too bad a shape. Let's see, what else do we do? We made the, the glider uh, upgrades for the suit so uh, and I tested those thinking that again that I was testing them for you guys but here's the long and short of it I right now we've got uh, the mobility or the hover booster this is really good because we, we can get really high on it and you know have a lot more hover fuel the glider though is absolutely amazing for traveling across the landscape so if we put the glider on instead now, what this allows us to do is this allows us to travel very long distances. Now, we don't we don't go as high, but look at this, man. You can go really, really far with a glider across the land. So this is going to be really useful for when we have to travel long distances across, you know, relatively flat terrain. Because, again, it doesn't go very high. Now, it will try and follow the contour. So if you're trying to go up a ridge, for example, um, it will... It will try and follow that unless you get into something that's really steep. So let's go this way. So it should, yeah, it should go up this just fine. But see, it does it does kind of bonk us into the side if, if it starts to get up too steep. But yeah, super handy. Now, this is going to still be relevant to us, too, because once we get to the other planets, you know, we're not going to have our rover or any other vehicles for that matter. The only thing we'll have is our spaceship. So, yeah, see how far we can go? Isn't that wonderful? Um, so we're still going to have to travel on foot. The only way you can get the other vehicles to the other planets is if you build a whole new base on those planets, which you can do, but it's a pain in the butt because you got to truck all the all the you know resources um, that you need from Proteus up to that planet uh, or Moon rather to to get all that stuff. Okay, so they both have their uses, but for for just hanging out around camp or you know trying to get up steep cliffs, the booster is the one you're going to want want to have on uh, because again the glider does not go very high in fact let's let me show you that I didn't actually show that specifically so if we use this little pillar for example as a uh, uh, you know as kind of a measuring thing here's how high we you know we can go really high 
with the the normal hover oh. booster. Oops, I let it run out. But if we put on the the glider, um, let's let wait for it to recharge. This is all the higher you you can go. Now again, it'll follow it'll follow the terrain, right? But you can't get up real high with it. So they both you know have their uses. The other thing to keep in mind too, and I should have probably offloaded, but I'm 133% over encumbered, so that's also affecting. If I was not encumbered, we'd probably be able to you know go even faster and further. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we demonstrated those. Um, what else did I do? I think, and and then we went to do the habitat, or not the habitat, the the barracks. So, I was planning on putting the barracks here. We have a problem though, and that problem is that. Uh, we can't fit it there because of the trees in the way. Uh, so that, so that's a real bummer because that was like the perfect spot for the barracks in it, but it's not going to let us do it because of the stupid tree. So we have a couple of options. We can build the barracks standalone. That's one option. So just find a spot, plop it down, and there, and there we have it. Uh, not ideal, but, you know, an option, right? Um, or the other thing that we could do, if we want, to, if we want it all attached is I could remove this hallway here and just plop the barracks down in here. Now the problem with that is then we're not going to be able to directly connect to these other two biodomes if we decide to use them later on. Um, which we may not even do. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really, I haven't made that decision one way or the other. But, you know, you, re you really kind of want the barracks attached to your main facility only because you, you go in there to save the game and more importantly, uh, you can go in there and you can get some really nice buffs from the furniture that you set up in there. Uh, so I don't really want that to be in a separate building. So I think what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go ahead and remove the ruined hallway and we're going to plop the barracks in there. And I hope that it, it'll fit. It sh should fit. I think it'll fit. Um, can we... Here, let's do something here really quick. So let's go to F2 to structures, hit the barracks. Um, and we'll... Uh, we'll rotate it this way. Yeah, I think I think that's going to fit in there. Yeah, it should fit in there. Okay. So, to do this now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to begin repairs on this so that we can actually, so it becomes ours. So, right now it says unowned, right? But as soon as we repair a part of it, Oh, okay, so do we have to repair the whole thing? Oh, we do. Okay. Hmm, that makes things a little more expensive, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's not giving me the option, so I think we have to do the frame here. All right, so we need to make a Zamok, and that's it. Oh, so this has to be a pressure wall. Oh, it's owned by me now. Okay. So we don't need to build those. Okay, good. So now, uh, what we should be able to do is remove the entire thing. Um, yeah, hallway. Oh, no, not destroy wall. We want to dismantle. Here we go. So, I, so this should, in theory, remove the whole thing. Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. All right, awesome. Again, huge thank you to uh, the individual that left that, that comment. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go to Structures and uh, and Barracks. Ah, there we go. <laughs> we made it work. We made it work. We found a solution to the problem. Okay, very good. Happy about that. Yeah, we, we want this thing attached to the base. We just do. Uh, or at least I do, I should say. Um, some of you may not care. Some of you might you know, make it stand alone and call it a day and that's fine, but not for me. Uh, I want it attached. Okay, so, um, you can do windowed walls or normal walls. And so the way that I like to do the barracks is I like to put the windows in the corner and along the back in these corners, but then these two walls I, I make solid. Um, you could probably actually do windowed walls all the way across now that I think about it, though, because... You can't use windowed walls in the habitat and put appliances down, but you can do that with stuff in the barracks. So I think I'm going to 
just do a bunch of windowed walls. But now we're going to have to make rubber. We have plenty of glass. We're going to have to make rubber and we're going to have to make cast iron. So three, two, two. So that, that's uh, seven, uh, 10, 12, 15, 17, 19, and 22. So we're going to need to make 22 cast iron in total for that to work. Look at that, 22 exactly. <laughs> How lucky is that? Now we're going to run out of, we're going to need rubber too. So to make rubber, we need carbon and hydrogen. So let's grab another thing of carbon. We are getting sort of kind of low on that. I think this episode is going to go a little bit longer than normal guys, but there's just some important stuff that I want to get through in this episode. So bear with me. <laughs> Some of you guys like long episodes, some of you don't, so it's uh it's a, have to do a little bit of a balancing thing there. Okay, let's go ahead and start building our uh, windowed walls here. Oh, stupid wind. Now I'm going to have to repair that because I didn't finish it all the way. You know, one of these walls... I have to think about something for a second. One of these walls is going to be a shower, and it's going to completely block the window, so... I'm probably going to put that right there, so we should probably not make that one a window. Okay, so for this one... We need a, a, a gunmetal and a nickel chromium. Okay, let's make that. We have to make a bronze first before we can make a gunmetal. Let's eat. And let's take a small bandage. Because we did take some damage from that storm. Since we completely ignored it. But we're not going to be able to do that when we do our hardcore playthrough. Okay, so we're just going to do a normal sidewall here. Very good. Now, this guy... Um, it's not giving me an option to repair it. Oh, I just... Never mind. It doesn't say repair. You just click the trigger. Okay. And again, for those of you who didn't understand what happened there, the wind interrupted me before I could fully build it, so it built incomplete, and so that's why I had to repair it. Okay, now, uh, almost done, guys. Almost done. Bear with me just a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is going to go to F and F2 to Appliances, and we want a shower, uh, which we're going to put right here. And this is going to give us an, an agility buff, I think, or a stamina buff, one of those. Uh, we're going to put our bed right here, appliances, uh, bed, and this is our save point. We're going to put a F2 uh, appliances, we're going to put our couch right here. Uh, we need oh, we need more rubber for that. Okay, let's come back to that. We're going to put our computer table, our computer desk here. Where is that at? Computer desk here. We need a computer screen. Okay, so I need to make one rubber and one computer screen. Okay, so computer desk can go here. And the couch can go here. And there you go. That sets up the barracks for us. Um, you can't, unfortunately, you can't put an extra storage unit in here. I wish you could, because then you could put something in this space. So right now, there's nothing in the game that can go in this space unless you, you know, made two computer desks, I guess. I don't know why you would, but you could. And so, yeah, that's the barracks. Now, here's the cool thing. Watch this. If I hit the couch, I get a stamina buff. And if I hit the shower, I get an agility buff. And now, see how, how I can move a lot faster with that agility buff? It's almost too fast. <laughs> 
<laughs> really, because you start bouncing off the walls. This is why I told you guys in the very first episode when we were looking at skills, I said don't put any more points into speed because if you uh, if you cranked speed up, you'd be this way all the time, and it's a real pain in the neck uh, when you're inside of a small enclosure. But it's great for when you're out and about because you have extra stamina and you have extra agility, and you can just cruise. You know, add add that to your glider um, a glider attachment, and man, you're in Fat City. Uh, if I do begin repairs, um, I'm gonna need uh, for the for the dome itself. Okay, hold on a sec. Oh hell, let's just do it. Okay, so that's the dome. Oh, this is actually faster than I thought it was gonna be. We might as well just do it now, then, right? We need rubber for that. These are the lights, the hal you know, like the halide lights for the plants. We need a glass and a rubber. Let's do it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to repair the hallway too. Uh, glass is gonna be in here. Uh, no, not in there. In here. And I need to make one more rubber. See, I'm bouncing off the walls, man. Okay, so we got that and the airflow system. And then finally, the this hose thing. I guess we have to do that from outside. Okay, let's go outside and do that real quick. Okay, there we go with that. And let's hop back in here. So, to finish the biodome, uh, well, it looks like we really kind of technically have. I think we probably just have to remove the, the crates. So let's get all the loots out of here. We got We're gonna have to remove them one way or the other. So there's just no two ways about it. There we go. All right. We have now built ourselves a working biodome. The last thing we're gonna do before I let you go is we're gonna go into here. We're gonna go to appliances. You can make normal bins or you can make smart bins. Um, I just make the smart bins because the smart bins are going to grow the crops much more quickly than the normal ones. So all we need to make one of these is a power cell. And so let's make a power cell. I'll do the rest off camera. I just want to show you the first one. All right, F2 appliances smart bin. Um, okay, good. It's going to let us build here. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so let's build this smart bin. I was, I was, you know, wondering if this stone was going to cause a problem, but it's not. It looked stupid, but, you know, what can you do, right? Now, the last thing, I know I keep saying the last thing, this is the last thing. This is the last thing we're going to do. Oh, and this is, by the way, the last thing. Uh, yeah, okay. So what we need is we need soil, uh, which we have here, but I also have a bunch more soil. Yeah, don't take that agility buff, guys, unless you're going to go out and about, because it just makes moving around the base a pain in the butt. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to grab a stack of soil. Let's convert this uh, extra sand that we found into glass, because why not, right? Now, it used to be that you could only plant carrots and potatoes, but I think someone was saying now we could also we can also do apples. Let's put that in there. So let's take a look and see how that's going to work. Whoop. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to press G to place soil. Okay, and then each bin has a different key assignment. So F and then B and B in this one. Okay, so now we have soil in all three of those bins, okay? Then you can plant... Uh, seeds in here. So, all right, if we do F. Oh, okay, so we have four options. We can do red berries, potatoes, plants, uh, or apples and carrots. That's new because it used to be just carrots and potatoes. So why would we be able to plant red berries but not purple berries? So I'm going to press, let's make this bin all apples okay so we're gonna put do f 
Now we're going to press G and F, and then we're going to press B and F. And there we planted apples. Now the game doesn't have a different uh, model for the produce. It all looks the same, which is, you know, maybe they'll fix that at some point. But anyway, we're, we're, we're making apple plants. Not apple trees, ladies and gentlemen, but apple plants. And when it's done, we're going to make ourselves an apple fritter in the furnace, and it's going to be absolutely freaking delicious. Okay, so that's how it works. So what I'm going to do off camera, dudes, and dudettes, is I'm going to build, um, uh, I'm going to finish building all the smart bins, so you can put two here, two here, and, a, and another one here. And then I'll make sure I have all four of the crops represented, and then maybe make a few extra carrots or potatoes. And then I'm going to fix this hallway uh, up. I'll do all that off camera. I might go get some more gas gases off camera, hydrogen and nitrogen, and do another batch of hydrazine off camera. And once that's done, we are in really good shape. We're, we've pretty much done everything that I want to do for our living quarters slash habitat. And the next thing will then, of course, be to build a laboratory because that's when we can start getting into the vehicles and that's going to be really fun all right thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we'll catch you in the next episode Bye bye